Hello, everyone, and thank you for attending today's public hearing for the Central Florida Expressway Authority's Northeast Connector Expressway, Phase 1 Project Development and Environment, or PDNE study. This public hearing and study are being conducted without regard to race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status. Persons wishing to express their concerns relative to compliance by CFX with Title VI may do so by contacting me, Kathy Putnam, via the information on this slide. All inquiries or complaints will be handled according to CFX procedure and in a prompt and courteous manner. The Northeast Connector Expressway Phase I study area is in Northeast Osceola County, east of Narcusi Road and north of US 192. Here we see a closer look at the Northeast Connector Expressway Phase I study area, which is depicted on the screen in red. The northern boundary is near Cyril's Drive, and the southern boundary is parallel to and just south of Nova Road. Within the study area, we are evaluating the location for a new expressway corridor approximately four and a half miles long. The Northeast Connector Expressway project has a long history. In 2010, Osceola County adopted the Northeast District Conceptual Master Plan. The master plan includes more than 29,000 housing units, 8.5 million square feet of commercial space, almost 2 million square feet of civic space, and 5,000 hotel rooms. The Northeast District Conceptual Master Plan, shown on the right, includes an expressway connection to Nova Road, which is identified by the gray dashed line. The Northeast Connector Expressway study area is superimposed on the master plan for reference. In response to Osceola County's expanding transportation needs, the former Osceola County Expressway Authority, also known as OCX, was formed in 2010. The final OCX Master Plan 2040 was published in August 2013. The master plan was structured on a series of expressways that form an interior ring of the county's urban growth boundary. In October 2013, the Florida Department of Transportation published a Future Corridors Report which recommended a collaborative process for Brevard, Osceola, and Orange Counties to address a regional connectivity gap between the Orlando International Airport and the Southern Space Coast. This led to the governor's executive order for the creation of the East Central Florida Corridor Task Force. The East Central Florida Corridor Task Force projected that the populations of Brevard, Orange, and Osceola counties would nearly double from 2 million to 3.8 million residents in the next five decades. Due to the limited options for both east-west and north-south travel, the task force noted concerns regarding the region's ability to achieve economic opportunities to support this growing population. In 2014, the task force submitted a final report to the governor recommending nine transportation corridors for further study. Five of those emphasize multimodal improvements to existing corridors, and four recommended study areas for new or significantly upgraded corridors. Two of the new study areas were east-west corridors, corridor D and F, as shown on this map. The phase one segment of the Northeast Connector will link to State Road 534, and State Road 417 to the west, as well as provide the opportunity to extend the expressway to I-95. The task force final report also recommended continuing the project development process for the Northeast Connector Expressway. Connections to existing east-west corridors, including Nova Road, 
are also included in the final report recommendations. As part of an interlocal agreement, CFX incorporated portions of the OCX 2040 Master Plan into CFX's Visioning 2040 Master Plan. CFX conducted Concept Feasibility and Mobility, or CF&M, studies for four transportation corridors to determine if they were viable and fundable in accordance with CFX policies and procedures. One of the corridors was the Northeast Connector Expressway. In 2018, Northeast Connector CF&M study evaluated numerous corridor alternatives and ultimately determined that there were no fatal flaws. In June 2020, the CFX Governing Board authorized the initiation of this PD&E study, which is highlighted in purple. While just over four miles in length, one can see the project's significance as it connects with three major regional corridors that were identified in the Governor's Task Force recommendations. The first step in the PD&E study was to evaluate where the Northeast Connector Expressway should be located within the study area. Two corridors were developed, analyzed, and documented in an Alternatives Corridor Evaluation Report. Each corridor was 2,000 feet wide. Corridor A generally follows the alignment shown in the Northeast District Conceptual Master Plan. Corridor B is located further east toward a potential extension to I-95. Corridor A was selected as the preferred corridor for the following reasons. It is consistent with the Northeast District Conceptual Master Plan as shown in this image. The input provided by directly affected stakeholders, an assessment of environmental impacts, and support received from both the Project Advisory Group and Environmental Advisory Group members. Within Corridor A, we evaluated a new location typical section with a 330-foot envelope. The proposed typical section includes four travel lanes and a median that is wide enough to accommodate future widening and or transit facilities. The outer grassed areas provide recovery distance for errant vehicles, noise walls, and storm water collection systems. Two alignment alternatives were considered within Corridor A. The alignments are the same from Cyril's Drive to just south of Jack Brack Road. An interchange is proposed at Jack Brack Road and two different interchange configurations were evaluated. The picture on the left is the standard diamond interchange. The line work in blue is the proposed construction by CFX, and the line work in brown will be constructed by other entities. The picture on the right is a partial cloverleaf interchange. In order to minimize wetland and surface water impacts, all ramp connections occur north of Jack Brack Road. While functional, the operational characteristics of the partial cloverleaf interchange are not as desirable as the diamond interchange. In addition, as traffic increases over time at the ramp junctions with the crossroad, modifications to the diamond configuration can be made with little to no impacts to the adjacent land use. The Jack Brack Road alternatives are the same length and have the same number of planned structures. The partial cloverleaf requires slightly longer bridges than the diamond. Both alternatives will impact two contamination sites and one potential historic resource. The potential historic resource is an old barn that is not recommended eligible for the National Register of Historic Places. No residential parcels are impacted. The diamond interchange requires slightly more right-of-way than the partial cloverleaf. The partial cloverleaf alternative has less floodplain, wetland, and surface water impacts than the diamond interchange. 
neither alternative impacts a canal, mitigation properties, or conservation easements. The anticipated impact to species is moderate for both alternatives. No socioeconomic impacts are anticipated as a result of the project. The preliminary costs for the two alternatives ranges from 96 to $97 million, with a diamond interchange being slightly more expensive. The diamond interchange is preferred by stakeholders. After further analysis and continued coordination with Osceola County staff and stakeholders, modifications were made to the Diamond Interchange. The ramps south of Jack Brack Road were moved closer to the mainline roadway alignment. The result is that the interchange no longer directly impacts Bullock Lake, and it minimizes the impacts to wetlands and floodplains. Impacts to wetlands were reduced by almost 25%, and surface water impacts were reduced by nearly 90%. The modification also accommodates the planned transmission line corridor. The tighter diamond alternative is the preferred alternative for the Jack Brack Road segment. This slide depicts the interim connections to Nova Road. The interim connection will remain until the northeast connector is extended further south or the Osceola Brevard County connectors are extended eastward from this location. The interim connection widens Nova Road to four lanes with separate turn lanes for safer access to the expressway. The Nova Road connection options one and two are very similar. The primary differences are the location of the expressway connection at Nova Road and the angle that the expressway crosses the C-32C canal. Option two has fewer wetland and surface water impacts and is more in line with the Osceola County adopted plan. The Nova Road connection options are similar in length and have the same number of planned structures. Option one requires more bridge length than option two. There are no contamination sites located near the alternatives. Option two does impact one potential historic resource, an old bridge. The bridge is not recommended eligible for the National Register of Historic Places. Both alternatives cross historic linear resources. Both alternatives impact three non-residential parcels, but the required right-of-way is slightly higher for option two. Both alternatives cross one canal and are expected to have a moderate impact on species. Option two has less floodplain, wetland, and surface water impacts. No mitigation or conservation easements are impacted by either alternative. No socioeconomic impacts are anticipated. The preliminary costs for the two alternatives range from 65 to $76 million. Option two is the more expensive option. Nova Road Connection Option two is preferred by Osceola County and stakeholders due to its consistency with the Northeast District Master Plan. Option two also has fewer environmental impacts. Option two is the preferred alternative. This slide shows the preferred alternative along with the natural constraints in the study area. The green hatched areas are wetlands. The light blue shape is 100 year floodplains. The orange shape is Natural Resources Conservation Service defined prime farmlands. The light purple or pink shape is scrub habitat, and the yellow icon represents a sandhill crane spotted during one of our field reviews. This slide shows the preferred alternative overlaid with the social constraints in the study area. The pink shape is the Northeast District Plan development. The blue lines are the Del Webb community that is currently under construction, and the purple lines are the planned Sunbridge development. 
the preferred alternative is entirely within the Northeast District, which planned for the inclusion of an expressway. There are a total of eight bridges planned over the proposed roadway. There are two contamination sites, a cattle dip vat and an old barn that will be impacted by the preferred alternative. There are also two potential historic resources, an old barn and an old bridge that will be impacted. These resources were determined ineligible for listing on the National Register of Historic Places. The State Historic Preservation Officer concurred with that finding. The preferred alternative will cross over the C-32C canal and will impact a total of 42 acres of floodplains, 18 acres of wetlands, and one acre of surface waters. The composite species rating is moderate. The total estimated project cost is $187 million. The evaluation and analysis from the engineering and environmental studies conducted for this project were documented in a series of reports. These reports showing the proposed improvements and potential impacts are available on the study webpage. Documents have also been on display in hard copy format since October 20th at the CFX headquarters and at the St. Cloud branch of the Osceola County Library. The study webpage is continually updated with study documents. You can navigate to the study webpage from the CFX homepage, or you can use the shortened web address shown here. All of the material shown tonight will be posted to the project webpage within five business days of this public hearing. There have been various opportunities for the public to provide input on this project. CFX welcomes your comments. Written comments received or postmarked by November 29, 2021 will become part of the public hearing summary. All written comments should be mailed to the address shown on this slide. Comments can also be made via email or through the study webpage. After tonight's public hearing, we will review and respond to public comments and finalize the engineering and environmental reports. In early 2022, the study will be presented to the CFX Governing Board for approval of the PD&E study, as well as a decision on whether the project will be advanced to the design phase. On behalf of CFX, Thank you again for this opportunity to present this project update.